Good afternoon, my friends. Thank you for joining us for one more session of Kardec After Lunch, hosted by Kardec Radio. Uh, download Kardec Radio's app for free, available for iOS and Android. Send questions, comments, or suggestions to Kardec Radio's Twitter account. And remember that although all of this work is done by volunteers, there are costs associated with web and app hosting, along with publishing. So if you're able to, please consider making a donation so this work of love may continue for many years to come. God bless. We, uh, as customary, we do uh, 15 minutes of quick reading directly from the book. We're going to be doing from the Medium's book. And uh, we do a little commentary. Uh, feel free to join in and interact, sending questions, comments, or suggestions, okay? try to answer to the best of my abilities. If I suggest you follow along or reading, and for that purpose, you can open it up on page number 170, uh, or you can go to kardecpedia.com or any um, other source to chapter seven, Bicorporeality and Transfiguration. That's what we'll be discussing. So. Uh, we're talking about um, the phenomena and two specific occasions uh, by Saint Alfonso and Saint Antonio of Padua. So uh, it says, when we evoke Saint Alfonso and question him about this incident, he provided us with the following answers. Number one, would you be willing to give us an explanation for this phenomenon? And the spirit replies, yes, when humans have completely dematerialized themselves through their virtue and have lifted their soul toward God, they can appear in two places at the same time. Here is how. The incarnate spirit, sensing the approach of sleep, can ask God permission to go somewhere. This is spirit or so, if you wish then abandons the body along with a portion of its spirit spirit and leaves the coarse matter behind in a state that resembles death. So the body in one location, the spirit traveling to another, they are not, the, the body is not conscious, and no, so they're not, uh, the body is not, I guess, active in one place and then the spirit in another. The body, of course, with the spirit being awake, uh, it has to be in a state of sleep or apparent death in this case. I say resembles death because the body remains connected to the perispirit and the soul to matter by a link that cannot be defined. The perispirit then appears in the desired place. I believe that it is everything you want to know. I guarantee it is not. <laughs> Let's continue. Number two. But that does not give us an explanation for the visibility and tangibility of the perispirit, does it? And he answers, Since it is detached from matter, and depending on how highly evolved it is, the spirit can become tangible. So, not just the ability, uh, and he did not say here, but he also implies permission. Okay? All of the happens, all the exists, of course, it has God's permission as well. Number three, is the sleep of the body indispensable for the spirit to be able to appear in other places? And he answers, the soul can split itself whenever it feels attracted to a place different from where the body is. The body does not have to be asleep, although in that case it is quite rare. However, at such a time, it is not in a perfectly normal state. It is always in some degree of ecstasy. And there's a commentary by Kardec, which he says, the soul does not actually split itself in the literal sense of the word, rather irradiates in several directions and can thus manifest itself in many places without becoming fragmented, just as light can be reflected in several mirrors at the same time. Or like the sun, who can shine its light uh, uh, all through the solar system and beyond, it does not split itself, right? Number four, 
if someone were deep in sleep while the Paris sorry the spirit was appearing somewhere else what would happen if he or she were suddenly awakened and the answer is that would not happen because if someone intended to awaken the person his or her spirit would return to the body in anticipation given that the spirit would have read the thought uh, and Kardec continues, an identical explanation has been given to us many times by spirits of both deceased and living individuals. Saint Alfonso had explained the double presence phenomena, but has offered no theory concerning visibility and tangibility. So, and I think we have mentioned this before as the communications that, uh, that we receive had to be. Uh, always taken with a healthy level of skepticism uh, and also sometimes uh, as a opinion not a, a like a absolute truth but an opinion of that spirit based on his or her level of development intellect morality etc right uh, the opinions of the spirit are not different than the opinions that we as individuals have while incarnate because the only difference is how the spirit is expressing itself is it expressing itself through the use of a incarnate no body no through a voice sound uh, with other means of no communication or through mediumship no uh, and having a medium as the middleman, middle person. So, uh, it, the, the opinion of the spirit, it, it's virtually the same. For us to be able to tell, you know, that is absolute truth or not, it will depend on many factors. But, nonetheless, we must uh, evaluate each one of those messages in regards to its content and to the ends that he prescribed. So, number, no, sorry, now we're going to Vespasian. Number 120. Tacitus, the name of a different spirit, I believe, reports a similar case. During the months that Vespasian spent in Alexandria while awaiting the periodic return of the summer winds and the season in which the sea was safest, Many wonders occurred that were regarded as a heaven explained its protection and the interest of the gods in the prince. These wonders increased Vespasian's desire to visit the sacred dwelling place of the gods in order to consult them regarding the empire. He ordered the temple to be closed to everyone else. He then entered it and was completely attentive to what the oracle was about to proclaim. When he saw standing behind the oracle a highly important Egyptian named Basilides, whom he knew to be ill in a place several days away from Alexandria. Vespasian later asked the priests if Basilides had come to the temple that day. He asked various pedestrians if they had seen him in the city, and he finally sent horsemen who returned to assure him that Basilides had in fact been 80 miles away at the time. Consequently, he no longer had any doubts that the vision was supernatural and the name of Basilides became an oracle to him. This uh, in Tacitus, I believe, Histories, a book, chapters 81 82, translated by Burnoff. Number 121. The person who appears simultaneously in two different places, therefore, has two bodies, one of only one of which is real, while the other is merely an appearance. One could say that the former has organic life and the later has anemic life. When the person awakens, the two bodies reunite and the anemic life re-enters the physical body. It does not seem possible at least we have no examples, and of course this is Kardec saying, but reason seems to demonstrate that when separated, the two bodies cannot simultaneously enjoy the same degree of active 
and intelligent life. Moreover, concerning what we have just stated, we would emphasize that the real body cannot die while the apparent body remains visible. The approach of death would always call the spirit back to the body, even if for only a moment. This also means that the apparent body could not be killed since it is neither organic nor composed of flesh and bone. It would vanish the second that anyone would want to kill it. Um, and there is a footnote, footnote number 23. I believe it refers to the spirited review, review spirited, and some examples from different years. Um, whenever we come across uh, footnotes, uh, I, I would like to point that out to you, but I encourage you to uh, look it up yourself and uh, look it up the historical figures words that you don't know and yet any other things that help uh, cement this knowledge in your head okay and not not just this knowledge but uh, this is a perhaps a, a a trick or a uh, additional support tool that can be used to uh, increase so increase the retention of whatever subject we are talking about because now you uh, you will be I guess recalling not just by the subject itself by but also because of its connection with a new um, subject or a new piece of information that you look at up yourself so number Oh, sorry, number 122 is another uh, chapter, or sorry, another item, is transfiguration. We shall now consider the second phenomenon, transfiguration, which entails a modification of the appearance of a living body. Regarding it, here is a case that occurred between 1858 and 1859 on the outskirts of Saint-Étienne, and whose perfect authenticity we can guarantee. A young lady of about 15 possessed this strange faculty of being able to transfigure herself in that at any given moment she could take on the appearances of certain deceased individuals. This illusion was so complete as to lead one to believe that one was actually in the person's presence due to the similarity of the facial traits expressions, voice tone, and even the specific speech patterns. This phenomenon repeated itself hundreds of times without any interference from the girl's will. She often took on the appearance of her brother, who had died a few years earlier, reproducing not only his facial features, but also his girth and height. A local doctor who was often present during these strange occurrences wanted to assure himself that he was not the victim of an illusion, so he performed the following experiment. And uh, between parentheses here we have the commentary as we gathered the information from the doctor himself, the girl's father, and many other trustworthy and honorable eyewitnesses. The doctor decided to weigh the girl in her normal state, or measure her uh, weight with a balance, a uh, scale, sorry. And then during the transfiguration in which she took on the appearances of her brother, who had died at age 22 and had been much larger and stronger than she. The doctor subsequently verified that during transfiguration, the girl's weight nearly doubled. So it wasn't just appearance uh, but also some other physical characteristics. The experiment was conclusive since it was impossible to attribute the appearance to a simple optical illusion. We will try to explain this type of occurrence which has always been regarded as a miracle but which we simply label as phenomena. Uh, and it is, it has been explained multiple times why we do not regard those mediumistic phenomena as miracles because miracles will imply the that God is breaking his established laws and that is not the case okay uh, all those mediumship phenomena uh, although very uncommon or may appear supernatural or miraculous to us 
it's nothing outside of his God's laws and uh, and his permission as well so thank you for being with us thank you for your support thank you for your patience until next time Godspeed to all